Yom Kippur, Erev Yom Kippur service. As a word of, of uh, just some housekeeping, there is childcare here. So um, if you have some children who misbehave or husbands who misbehave, it's back, back in the nurseries. Um, if you would please silence your cell phones, which you never think that needs to be said, but sometimes it does, so. Especially when God calls. <clears throat> uh, and then just a reminder, too, uh, of our services tomorrow. At 10 o'clock, we'll have our morning prayers here. And at 6 o'clock in the evening, we'll have our Havdalah to break, uh, before we break the fast. So just, uh, just a heads up. And yes, it is, a, it is a fast day. So those of you who can are encouraged to fast. Um, starting. <laughs> All right, so without further ado, uh, Rachel and Charlie are going to come up and kindle the Yom Kippur lights. Blessed are you, Adonai our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and has commanded us to kindle the lights of Yom Kippur. That was perfect, wasn't that? <laughs> Thank you so much. All right, we are now on page 24 of your Machsor. Sare ve harame ve koname ve hinuye ve kinuse ushavo. Vadia 
All vows, oaths, and pledges which we have been forced to take from the last Yom Kippur until this Let such personal vows, pledges, and oaths be considered neither vows, nor pledges, nor oaths. Together. And the congregation of Israel shall be forgiven with the Gentile who sojourns among them, since all the people have transgressed in error. Pardon the iniquities of this people according to your great mercy, as you have forgiven this people from Egypt until now as it is written. And Adonai said, I have forgiven according to your words. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech ha'olam, shehechianu v'kiima. Blessed are you, Adonai our God, King of the universe, who has kept us alive and sustained us and brought us to this season. Our God, and the God of our forefathers, remember us with a favorable memory before you, and recall us with a recollection of salvation and mercy from the highest of the ancient heavens. Remember on our behalf, Adonai, our God, the love of the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and, Jake, and Israel, your servants, the covenant, the kindness, and the oath that you swore to our father, Abraham, on Mount Moriah, and the Akedah, when he bound his son Isaac atop the altar, as it is written in your Torah. And it happened after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham. And he replied, Here I am. And he said, Please take your son, your only begotten, whom you love, Isaac, and get yourself to the land of Moriah. Bring him up there as an offering upon one of the mountains So Abraham awoke early in the morning, and he saddled his donkey. He took his two young men with him, and Isaac his son. He split the wood for the offering, and rose and went toward the place which God had indicated to him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and perceived the place from afar, and Abraham said to his young men, Stay here by yourselves with the donkey, while I and the lad will go yonder. We will prostrate ourselves, and we will return to you. And Abraham took the wood for the offering. He took in his hand the fire and the knife, and the two of them went together. Then Isaac spoke to Abraham his father and said, Father, he said, Here I am, my son. And he said, Here are the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the offering? And Abraham said, God will see for himself the lamb for the offering, my son. And the two of them went together. They arrived at the place which God indicated to him. Abraham built the altar there and arranged the wood. He bound Isaac, his son, and he placed him on the altar atop the wood. Abraham stretched out his hand Adonai called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. And he said, Do not stretch out your hand against the lad, nor do anything to him, for now I know that you are a God-fearing man, since you have not withheld your son, your only begotten, from me. 
And Abraham looked up and saw, Behold, a ram, after it had been caught in the thicket by its horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and brought it as an offering instead of his son. And Abraham named that site Adonai Yireh. As it is said this day, on the mountain, Abraham returned to his young men, and they rose and went together to Beersheba. And Abraham stayed at Beersheba. Lord of the universe, may it be your will, Adonai our God, and the God of our forefathers, that you remember for our sake the covenant of our forefathers. Just as Abraham our forefather suppressed his mercy for his only son and wished to slaughter him in order to do your will, so may your mercy suppress your anger from upon us, and may your mercy overwhelm your attributes. May you overstep with us the line of your law and deal with us, Adonai our God, with the attribute of grace and the attribute of mercy. In your great goodness, may you turn aside your burning wrath from your people, your city, your land, and your heritage. Fulfill for us, Adonai our God, the word you pledged through Moses, your servant, as it is said, I shall remember my covenant with Jacob, also my covenant with Isaac, and also my covenant with Abraham shall I remember, and the land shall I remember. Always let a person be God-fearing privately and publicly, acknowledge the truth, speak the truth within his heart. Not in the merit of our righteousness do we cast our supplication before you, but in the merit of your abundant mercy. What are we? What is your life? Our life. What is our kindness? What is our righteousness? What is our salvation? What is our strength? What is our might? What can we say before you, Adonai our God, and the God of our forefathers? Are not all the heroes like nothing before you, the famous as if they had never existed, the wise as if devoid of wisdom, and the perceptive as if devoid of intelligence? For most of their deeds are desolate, and the days of their lives are empty before you. The preeminence of man over beast is non-existent, for all is vain, but we are your people. Children of Abraham, your beloved, to whom you took an oath at Mount Moriah, the offspring of Isaac, his only son, who was bound atop the altar, the community of Jacob, your firstborn son, whom, because of the love with which you adored him and the joy with which you delighted in him, you named him Israel and Yeshurun, the congregation of Yeshua, the son of David, by whom you have made us fellow heirs and partakers in all your promises. Would you stand, please? Bless Adonai, the blessed one. Blessed is Adonai, the blessed one for all eternity. Blessed are you, Adonai our God, King of the universe, who at your word brings on evenings, with wisdom opens the gates of the heavens, and with understanding changes times and varies the seasons, and orders the stars in their heavenly constellations as he wills. He creates day and night, removing light from before the darkness and darkness from before the light. He causes day to pass and the night to approach and separates between day and night. Adonai of hosts is his name. May the living and enduring God continually reign over us for all eternity. Blessed are you, Adonai, who brings on evenings. With an everlasting love have you loved the house of Israel, your people. Torah and commandments, decrees and ordinances have you taught us. Therefore, Adonai, our God, when we lie down and when we rise up, we will discuss your decrees, and we will rejoice with the words of your Torah and with your commandments for all eternity. And we will meditate on them day and night. May you not remove your love from us forever. Blessed are you, Adonai, who loves his people Israel. Vemru. Amen.
Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kavod Malkuto Le'olam Va'ed Hear, O Israel, Adonai our God, Adonai is one. Blessed be the name of his glorious kingdom for all eternity. You shall love Adonai your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your resources. Let these matters that I command you today be on, upon your heart. And speak of them while you sit in your home, while you walk on the way, when you retire and when you arise. Bind them as a sign upon your hand and let them be to fill in between your eyes and write them on the doorposts of your house and upon your gates. And it will come to pass that if you continually hearken to my commandments that I command you today, to love Adonai your God and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul, that I will provide rain for your land in its proper time, the early and late rains, that you may gather in your grain, your wine, and your oil. I will provide grass in your field for your cattle, and you will eat and be satisfied. Beware, lest your heart be seduced, and you turn astray and serve gods of others and bow down. He will restrain the heaven, so there will be no rain, and the ground will not yield its produce. And you will swiftly be banished from the goodly land which Adonai gives you. Place these words of mine upon your heart and upon your soul. Bind them for a sign upon your arm and let them be to fill in between your eyes. Teach them to your children to discuss them while you sit in your home, while you walk on the way, when you retire and when you arise, and write them on the doorposts of your house and upon your gates in order to prolong your days and the days of your children upon the ground that Adonai has sworn to your ancestors to give them like the days of the heavens upon the earth. You may be seated. And we will now sing together, Love the Lord Your God. And we recognize that the screens are really small. We haven't yet installed the big center screen. You should know this song, so you should be able to recall from memory the words of it. But if you have a hard time, there's plenty of seats on the front pews. <laughs> but let's go ahead and sing together. Yeah. 
Adonai, open my lips, that my mouth may declare your praise. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, and the God of our forefathers, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob, the great, mighty, and awesome God, the supreme God who bestows beneficial kindnesses and creates everything, who recalls the kindnesses of the patriarchs and brings a redeemer to their children's children for his name's sake with love. Remember us for life, O King who desires life, and inscribe us in the book of life for your sake, O living God. O King, helper, savior, and shield, blessed are you, Adonai, shield. You are eternally mighty, Adonai, the one who resurrects the dead are you. Abundantly able to save, who sustains the living with kindness, resurrects the dead with abundant mercy, supports the fallen, heals the sick, releases the confined, and maintains his faith to those asleep in the dust. Who is like you, O master of mighty deeds? And who is comparable to you, O king who causes death and restores life and makes salvation flourish? Who is like you, merciful father? And you are faithful to resurrect the dead. Blessed are you, Adonai, who resurrects the dead. You are holy and your name is holy, and holy ones praise you every day forever. You are holy and your name is awesome, and there is no God other than you. As it is written, Adonai, master of legions, will be lofty in judgment, and the holy God will be sanctified in righteousness. Blessed are you, Adonai, the holy king. You have chosen us from all peoples, you have loved us and taken pleasure in us. You exalted us above all tongues and you sanctified us with your commandments. You drew us close. Your great and holy name upon us. And you gave us Adonai our God with love this day of atonement for pardon, forgiveness and atonement and to pardon all our iniquities on it. A holy convocation a memorial of the exodus from Egypt. Our God and the God of our forefathers, may their rise, come, reach, be noted, be favored, be heard, be considered, and be remembered. The remembrance and consideration of ourselves, the remembrance of our forefathers, the remembrance of Messiah, son of David, your servant, the remembrance of Jerusalem, the city of your holiness, the remembrance of your entire people, the family of Israel, for goodness, for grace, for kindness, and for compassion, for life, and for peace on this day of atonement. Remember us on it, Adonai our God. For goodness, consider us on it for blessing, and help us on it for life. In the matter of salvation and compassion, pity, be gracious and compassionate with us and help us. For our eyes are turned to you because you are God, the gracious and compassionate King. Our God and God of our fathers, pardon our iniquities on this day. Blot out and remove our willful sins and errors from before your eyes. As it is said, I, only I, am the one who blots out your willful sins for my own sake, and I will not remember your errors. And it is said, I have blotted out as a cloud your willful sins, and as a mist your errors have redeemed you. And it is said, for through this day shall he atone for you to cleanse you from all your sins. Shall you be clean before Adonai. Sanctify us by your commandments and grant our portion in your Torah. Satisfy us from your goodness and gladden us with your salvation and purify our heart to serve you sincerely. 
for you are the forgiver of Israel and the pardoner of the tribes of Yeshurun in every generation. And other than you, we have no king who pardons and forgives, only you. Blessed are you, Adam. and the iniquities of his people, the family of Israel, and removes our sins year by year, king over all the earth who sanctifies Israel and the day of atonement. Be favorable, Adonai our God, toward your people Israel and their prayer. Restore the service of the Holy of Holies of your temple. Accept with love and favor the offerings of Israel and their prayer and may the service of your people Israel always be favorable to you. May our eyes behold your return to Zion in compassion. Blessed are you, Adonai, who restores his presence to Zion. We gratefully thank you, for it is you who are Adonai our God. Rock of our lives, shield of our salvation, are you from generation to generation, we will thank you and declare your praise for our lives, which are committed to your hand and for our souls that are entrusted to you, for your miracles that are with us every day, and for your wonders and favors in every season, evening, morning, and afternoon. Gracious one, for your compassions were never exhausted, and the compassionate one, for your kindnesses never ended. Always have we put our hope in you. For all these, may your name be blessed and exalted, our King, continually, forever and ever, and inscribe all the children of your covenant for a good life. Everything alive shall gratefully acknowledge you and praise your name sincerely, O God of our salvation and help. Blessed are you, Adonai, whose name is the Gracious One, and to you it is fitting to give thanks upon your people Israel forever. For you are the King, Lord of all peace. May it be good in your eyes to bless your people Israel at all times and in every hour with your peace. In the book of life, blessing, peace, and good sustenance, may we be remembered and inscribed before you. We and all your people, the house of Israel, for a good life and for peace. Blessed are you, Adonai, who blesses his people Israel with peace. Our God and the God of our prayer come before you and do not hide yourself from our supplication for we are not so arrogant and stiff-necked as to say before you Adonai our God and God of our fathers that we are righteous and have not sinned but truly we have sinned. We have become guilty. We have betrayed. We have spoken slander. We have caused perversion. We have caused wickedness. We have sinned willfully. We have extorted. We have accused falsely. We have given evil counsel. We have been deceitful. We have scorned. We have rebelled. We have provoked. We have turned. We have been perverse. We have acted wantonly. We have been obstinate. We have been wicked. We have corrupted. We have been abominable. We have strayed. You have let us go astray. We have turned away from your commandments and from your good laws, but to no avail. 
but you are righteous in all that has come upon us. For you have acted truthfully while we have caused wickedness. What can we, can we recount to you who abides in the heavens? Do you not know all things, both hidden and revealed? You know the secrets of eternity and the most hidden mysteries of all the living. You search the innermost chambers and test thoughts and emotions. Nothing is hidden from you and nothing is concealed from your eyes. Before we begin the Vidui, let us take some time to pray silently and confess. For the sin that we have sinned before, and for the sin that we have sinned before you, through hardness of the heart. For the sin that we have sinned before you without knowledge, and for the sin that we have sinned before you with the utterance of the lips. For the sin that we have sinned before you in public, or in private, and for the sin that we have sinned before you through immorality. For the sin that we have sinned before you through harsh speech, and for the sin that we have sinned before you with knowledge and with deceit. For the sin that we have sinned before you through inner thoughts, and for the sin that we have sinned before you through wronging a neighbor. For the sin that we have sinned before you through insincere confession and for the sin that we have sinned before you in a session of vice. For the sin that we have sinned before you willfully and carelessly and for the sin that contempt for parents and teachers, for the sin that we have sinned before you by exercising power, and for the sin that we have sinned before you through misusing your name, for the sin that we have sinned before you through foolish speech, and for the sin that we have sinned before you through impure lips. For the sin that we have sinned before you with the evil inclination and for the sin that we have sinned before you against those who know and against those who do not know. For all these things, O oh God of oh forgiveness, forgive us and cleanse us. We have sinned before you by manipulating through bribery. And for the sin that we have sinned before you through denial 
and false promises. For the sin that we have sinned before you through evil talk, and for the sin that we have sinned before you through scorning. For the sin that we have sinned before you in commercial dealings, and for the sin that we have sinned before you with food and drink. For the sin that we have sinned before you through interest and extortion, and for the sin that we have For the sin that we have sinned before you with prying eyes, and for the sin that we have sinned before you with the idle chatter of our lips. For the sin that we have sinned before you with haughty eyes, and for the sin that we have sinned before you with brazenness. For the sin that we have sinned before you in throwing off your yoke. And for the sin in judgment. For all these, O oh God of forgiveness, forgive us and cleanse us. For the sin that we have sinned before you through entrapping a neighbor. And for the sin that we have sinned before you through a begrudging eye. For the sin that we have sinned before you through foolishness. And for the sin that we have sinned before you with obstinacy. For the sin that we have sinned before you with legs that run to do evil. And for the sin that we have sinned before you by gossiping. For the sin that we have sinned before you through vain oath-taking, and for the sin that we have sinned before you through baseless hatred. For all these, O God of forgiveness, forgive us, pardon us, and cleanse us. Of our Messiah, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our sins was laid on him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And Adonai has laid on him the iniquity of us all. You are the merciful one who accepts repentant ones. You assured us from the beginning of creation regarding repentance, and regarding repentance our eyes look hopefully to you. And David, your servant, said before you, who can discern errors from secret sins? Cleanse me. Cleanse us, Adonai, our God, of all our willful sins, and purify us of all our contaminations. Sprinkle upon us pure water and purify us, as it is written through your prophet, I shall sprinkle pure water upon you and purify you. Of all your contaminations and of all your abominations, I will purify you. Greatly beloved man cried out before you, My God, incline your ear and listen. Open your eyes and behold the desolation of ourselves and of the city upon which your name is proclaimed. For we do not present our supplications before you because of our righteousness, rather because of your great compassion. O oh Lord, hear. O oh Lord, forgive. Oh, my God, be attentive and act. Do not delay. For your sake, my God, for your name is proclaimed upon your city and your people. Ezra the scribe said before you, My God, I am embarrassed and ashamed to lift my face to you. My God, for our transgressions have multiplied above our heads, and our sins extend unto heaven. You are the God of forgiveness, compassionate and merciful, slow to anger and abundant in kindness. 
and you have not forsaken them. Yeshua the Messiah said before you, Abba, Father, forgive them. In the past, Adonai, you provided atonement through the blood of animal sacrifices. But now you provide cleansing through Yeshua, our Messiah, as it is written. How much more then? The eternal spirit of Adonai offered himself unspotted to God. That we may serve the living God. But when our high priest, Yeshua, had offered one sacrifice for sins for all time, he sat down at the right hand of God. For by one sacrifice, he was perfected forever. Would you stand, please? Avinu Machelu Avinu Machelu Avinu Machelu Hanenu Vahanenu Kihen Vanu Masim Oseimanu Our Father, our King, we have sinned before you. Our Father, our King, we have no king but you. Our Father, our King, deal kindly with us for your name's sake. A good year. Our Father, our King, nullify all harsh decrees upon us. Our Father, our King, nullify the thoughts of those who hate us. Our Father, our King, thwart the counsel of our enemies. Our Father, our King, exterminate every foe and adversary from upon us. Our Father, our King, seal the mouths of our adversary and accuser. Our Father, our King, exterminate pestilence, sword, famine, captivity, destruction, and iniquity from the members of your covenant. Our Father, our King, withhold the plague from your heritage. Our Father, our King, forgive and pardon all our iniquities. Our Father, our King, wipe away and remove our will. Our Father, our King, erase through your abundant compassion all records of our guilt. Our Father, our King, return us to you in perfect repentance. Our Father, our King, send complete recovery to the sick of your people. Our Father, our King, tear up the evil decree of our verdict. 
Our Father, our King, recall us with a favorable memory before you. Our Father, our King, inscribe us in the book of life. Our Father, our King, inscribe us in the book of redemption and salvation. Our Father, our King, inscribe us in the book of sustenance and support. Our Father, our King, inscribe us in the book of merits. Our Father, our King, inscribe Our Father, our King, make salvation flourish for us soon. Our Father, our King, raise high the horn of Israel, your people. Our Father, our King, raise high the power of your anointed. Our Father, our King, fill our hands from your blessings. Our Father, our King, fill our storehouses with abundance. Our Father, our King, hear our voice. Pity and be compassionate to us. Our Father, our King, accept with compassion and favor our prayer. Our Father, to our prayer. Our Father, our King, remember that we are but dust. Our Father, our King, please do not turn us from your empty hand from you empty handed. Our Father, our King, may this moment be a moment of compassion and a time of favor before you. Our Father, our King, take pity upon us and upon our children and our infants. Our Father, our King, act for the sake of those who were murdered for your holy name. Our Father, our King, act for the sake of those who were slaughtered for your oneness. for the sake of those who went into fire and water, for the sanctification of your name. Our Father, our King, avenge before our eyes the spilled blood of your servants. Our Father, our King, act for your sake, if not for our sake. Our Father, our King, act for your sake and save us. Our Father, our King, act for the sake of your abundant compassion. Our Father, our King, act for the sake of your great, mighty, and awesome name that is proclaimed among us, upon us. Our Father, our King, be gracious with us and answer us. Though we have no worthy deeds, treat us with charity and kindness and save us. Our Father, our King, do it for the sake of Messiah. Avinu Malkeinu, Avinu Malkeinu, Avinu Malkeinu, Chaneinu Vaneinu, Ki ein Banu Masim, Osei Manu, Zedaka Vachesed. You may be seated.
Once upon a time, as all good stories begin, there was a young Israelite man who, with the help of his father, selected a beautiful woman to be his bride. His father and the bride's father then make arrangements for her redemption from her father's household. A marriage contract outlining the expectations of each party is created with the bride's consent, and then it is signed. The established bride price was then paid by the groom's father to the bride's father that would then belong to the bride herself. Both the bride-to-be and the groom would then ritually cleanse themselves in the mikvah. The betrothal period. The bride and groom meet under the chuppah, the symbol of a new household being planned. The groom would then give the bride a token, a pledge of his love for her and that he would return. Because one year would pass, during which time the two were bound together, but not living together. They would not consummate the marriage yet. This year of preparation was when the groom built an addition onto his father's house, and the bride was busy making her wedding garments. Next we go into the wedding and marriage period. The groom did not know when he would be sent to retrieve his bride. Only the father, only his father would know. The groom's father determined when it was time for the groom to gather his bride. As the bride was also waiting expectantly for her groom's return. So he gets the signal, go and get your bride. He and his entourage commence. One of the groom's men would go before the arrival of the groom and shout, Behold, the bridegroom comes. Followed by... At the sounding of the shofar, the entire wedding processional would go through the streets of the city to the bride's house. The bride would emerge with her bridesmaids, and present herself to her groom. She has broken the contract. All she can do is stand before him and await his decision. In ancient times, If the bride was unfaithful, the groom had the right to annul the betrothal contract. But he did not have to. If he chose to keep her, she would again have to be ritually cleansed. Her grief would be swept away by her groom's forgiveness. And rejoicing would begin. So the groom forgives her. They then would both enter the wedding chamber... Once they emerged from the wedding chamber, a grand seven-day feast would commence celebrating the union. If you think of it, if the chuppah has a roof and no walls, our sukkah has walls and no roof, is a completion of this house that's being built. On the eighth day, Their new life together would finally commence in the house the groom had added to his father's house. What I've just described to you is all of the feasts. In Pesach, in Passover, or before Passover, the groom has selected a redemption out of her father's house. The established bride price is paid. It's a steep price, too. A 
at Shavuot, the marriage contract, outlining the expectations of each party is created and then signed. And also at Shavuot, the pledge, the token is given in the form of the Ruach HaKodesh. It is our guarantee that our groom will return. But in our absence, he leaves us with something. At Yom Teruah, the blasting of the shofar signals the groom's return. He's coming to carry his bride away. And at Yom Kippur, the bride of Messiah stands separated garments she's been making through her acts of faithfulness or unfaithfulness standing before her groom waiting for his decision because she has been unfaithful we have been unfaithful and there's nothing we can do nothing we can do but just stand before him and wait Will he accept us? Or will he discard us in disgrace? We stand before him and say, My beloved, as you have been preparing a place for me in your father's house, I have unfaithfully waited for you. Forgive me. Honesty, confession, and the lifting Will he forgive? Will he carry us to our new home? The answer, of course, is yes. Yes, he will take us. We, the wayward bride, will be cleansed in a way we could never do for ourselves. And we will complete Praise the Lord. So here we are in our strange white outfits. As white as we can possibly make them because we know the reality is that we're not quite so white. But that our groom loves us anyway. And he will carry us to our home. Baruch Hashem. As is my custom, I forgot a song that we're going to <laughs> listen to. I think we're just going to listen to this song now.
Yit Gada Rabba Baalma Divra Hirute Biyamlik Malhute Biyayehun Uv Yomehun Uv Haye the whole Beit Israel Baagala Uvezman Karif Vemru Amen Yit Bara Vayishtaba Vayit Paor Ar Vayit Romam Vayit Nase Vayit Hadar Vayit Ale Vayit Hala Shime Dakuda Barihu Leila Vashira Tatush Vahata Vinehem Hat Ata Da Amiran Baalma Vemru Tid Kabel the Lord Hon Uva Uthon the Kol Beit Israel Kadam Avuhon the Vishmaya Vemru Yehe Shlama Rabamin Shemaya Vahayim Alenu Vako Israel Vemru O say shalom bimromav, who ya say shalom alenu baal ko Yisrael. Bemru. And sanctified. In the world that he created as he willed, may he give rain to his kingship and cause his salvation to flourish and bring near his Messiah in your lifetimes and in your days, and in the lifetimes of the entire family of Israel, swiftly and soon. Amru, may his great name be blessed forever and ever. Blessed, praised, glorified, exalted, extolled, mighty, appraised, and lauded by the name of the Holy One, blessed is he exceedingly beyond any blessing and song, praise and consolation that are uttered in the world. Bemru, accept our prayers with mercy and favor. May the prayers and supplications of the entire family of Israel be accepted before their Father who is in heaven. Bemru, blessed be the name of Adonai from this time and forever. May there be abundant peace from heaven and life. Amen. My help is from Adonai, maker of heaven and earth. He who makes peace in his heights, may he make peace upon us and upon all Israel. Amru. Adonai is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? When evildoers approach me to devour my flesh, my tormentors and my foes against me, it is they who stumble and fall. Though an army would besiege me, my heart will not fear, though the war would rise against me. In this I trust. One day.
Indeed, he will hide me in his shelter on the day of evil. He will conceal me in the concealment of his tent. He will lift me upon a rock. Now my head is raised above my enemies around me, and I will make offerings in his tent to come. I will sing and make music to Adonai. Adonai, hear my voice when I call. Be gracious toward me and answer me. In your behalf, my heart has said, seek his presence. Your presence, Adonai, do I seek. Conceal not your presence from me. Repel not your servant in anger. You have been my helper. Abandon me not. Forsake me not. Father and mother forsake me. Adonai will gather me in. Teach me your way, Adonai, and lead me on the path of integrity. Because deliver me not to the wishes of those who breathe violence. Had I not trusted that I would see the goodness of Adonai in the land of life, self, and he will give you courage and hope in Adonai. Dear Father in heaven, I come before you now as one who desires a new beginning. You are the lover of my soul. And I know that whenever I was being hurt by others, you were there beside me, experiencing the pain as well. When I was in tears, So now I choose to answer those who have mistreated me just as Messiah answered those who mistreated him. I say, Father, forgive them, for they did not know what they were doing. In your word you say, for I will forgive their iniquity and their sin I will remember no more. So Father, I too will say the same. I will forgive their mistreatment of me and their sin I will remember. 
in pain. They had been hurt just as I have been. They were victims the same as I. But I choose now to stop this sin from causing further damage. I choose to embrace the pain that they inflicted upon me just as you embrace the pain I have inflicted upon you by my own sin. And I choose to forgive them just as you have forgiven me. By forgiving those who have wronged me, I release them from any debt I feel they owe me. I leave them in your hands so that you can heal and restore them just as you are healing and restoring me. And unforgiveness in my heart. And this also caused pain to those who are closest to me. Please forgive me for holding on to these poisonous thoughts and emotions. And whatever darkness I have invited into my life because of unforgiveness, I now reject and repent of. I claim the freedom that is now my Savior, Yeshua. I renounce all feelings of unforgiveness. I renounce all feelings of bitterness. I renounce all feelings of resentment. I renounce all feelings of anger. I renounce all feelings of depression. I renounce all feelings of despair. that has attached itself to me through these poisonous emotions and say to it, be gone now and forever. And in its place, I invite your Holy Spirit and the new life and freedom that it brings. I welcome and embrace your grace. I welcome and embrace your patience. I welcome and embrace your peace. I welcome and embrace your joy. I welcome and embrace your light. I welcome you to live within me. Fill me completely with yourself. I give myself completely to you as a living sacrifice. From this day forward, I choose to walk in your paths and according to your holy who have wronged me and to fully restore them to full fellowship with you so that in a day to come, we may rejoice before you together as friends who have been washed clean by your love. Until that day, I thank you for the happiness that is my inheritance as your beloved child. I know that you will never leave me and that you will never forsake me. Stretch my heart so that I may come to know just how much you love me so that I may love you in return as you deserve. Father, I thank you. Would you stand now, please? Ja er er nei på nei vel ek ha, vei kun ek ha. I sa er nei på nei vel ek ha, vei sem lek ha, shalom. May er nei bless you and keep you. May Adonai make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May Adonai lift his countenance upon you.
and give you peace. Thus concludes our evening together. Um, just remember that 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, we're having our morning prayers for those of you who can attend. Uh, otherwise, we'll see you again tomorrow at 6 p.m. here for our Havdalah service. Thank you, and may you have a pleasant fast.